After hearing the voice on my phone, I immediately turned around. There was nothing there. Despite this, I hightailed it downstairs. That eerie voice reinforced my phobia of addicts and installed in me an indescribable dread. I could no longer bear to be in the house by myself. I called John again and begged him to help me out. I told him I'd give him the gas money for the eight-hour round trip. He was reluctant at first, knowing he'd have to spend the night and call out from work the next morning. Curiosity got the best of him in the end. After much deliberation, he agreed to come over. I waited for John in my car. While sitting there, I couldn't help but examine my house. I began asking myself questions, like, is it really haunted? Do ghosts really exist? And my favorite, is this what my life has come to? Though the questions were speculative and rhetorical, I pretty much knew the answers. As I gazed towards the house in disappointment, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It was a silhouette standing at the attic window. Holy shit. What the fuck? What do I do? Those were the only retorts that crossed my mind after seeing the shadowy figure. After a few moments of staring, the figure stepped back from the window, completely out of sight. In a moment of bravery, I chose to go back in the house and up to the attic. Crazy, I know. But it's my house, and I needed to show this thing that I wasn't interested in playing its games, even if I was scared shitless. Besides, Jean would have my head if I didn't follow the damned thing. Feeling confident, but still shaky, I ventured up into the attic. I swung the door open without hesitation and waltzed in like I owned the place. After all, I did. The attic was void of any ghostly figures, but it did harbor the faint scent of candle wax. Unsure of how to proceed, I started talking in a loud and firm tone. This isn't your house. I'm tired of your bullshit games, spirit. I demand that you leave at once. I knew this wasn't going to work, but it was almost cathartic. I felt a hell of a lot better fighting back. I walked around the attic, satisfied with my rant, thinking that I had actually conquered my fear. My smug demeanor wouldn't last more than a few moments. Soon after I spoke, a gust of wind blew through the attic and hit me like a bus. Nearly knocked me over. I knew it was the ghost's doing. I tried to stand my ground, but I was pretty damn frightened. I watched as everything around me flew about, creating a tornado of mementos and keepsakes. I was about to retreat when I noticed something that hadn't budged an inch. It was the book on witchcraft that I had seen before. Upon noticing it, the wind suddenly stopped and everything fell to the floor. I walked over to the book, curious as to why it remained stationary. As I did, it opened up on its own. I was startled, but I somehow sensed no malice. I was coming around to the fact that the ghost might really be trying to communicate with me. The page the book landed on was a spell. The whole thing was in Latin, but from what I could make out, it had something to do with growing plants. Confused, I reached out to the ghost for help. What do you want me to do? After asking the question, the attic door slammed shut. I thought for a moment and gathered that it wanted me to recite the spell in the attic. I was still confused but somehow calm. 
It felt as though I was helping the spirit in some way. Before I could read from the book, my phone went off. It was a text from John. So, so sorry, I can't make it out there. My boss won't give me the day off tomorrow. And I'm not sure my car will make it there and back. It desperately needs new tires. And I won't be able to buy those until Friday. Give me a call back then, and I'll see what I can do. Good luck. Fuck. Even though I wasn't freaking out anymore, it was nice knowing that someone was on their way to my house. Just in case things went sour. I didn't like it, but I was on my own. I accepted this and turned my attention back to the book. It was time to deliver the spell. I cleared my throat and began reciting the text in the book. I took Latin in college, and although I didn't retain all of the information, I knew enough to make the proper pronunciations. Even still, I stumbled over my words during certain parts. Because of this, I had to restart a couple of times. I wanted to get it right, especially if it was truly what the ghost wanted. After finishing the spell flawlessly, for the most part, I walked out with the book in hand, wondering if everything was over. When I reached the bottom step and turned around the corner, it quickly became apparent that it wasn't. The basement door was wide open. I was in uncharted territory, taking orders from a ghost, but I hoped I was following along all right. Seeing the basement door ajar convinced me that I probably needed to recite the spell down there as well. I still wasn't sure why, but it felt like this was the spirit's will. I obliged. I walked down into the basement with the book and turned the light on. A quick glance around revealed that I was alone and there was no door. I cleared my throat once again and began reciting the spell word for word. Honestly, I was a little excited. It felt like I was doing something productive about my ghost problem and that it might actually help put it to rest. This time, I got it right on the first try. Upon finishing the spell in the basement, the house began shaking. When I say the house, I mean the whole house, basement and all. I'd never experienced an earthquake before, but it seemed like the only logical explanation for what was happening. It wasn't until I looked around the room during the madness that I realized it was the spell's doing. There, on the far wall, shaking with the rest of the house, was the attic door. I wondered if the spell had somehow summoned it, simultaneously causing the house to wobble. The tremor eventually stopped, and I was left with the door, lending credence to my theory. I waited for a few minutes, thinking the door would open, but it did not. It seemed that I would have to do it myself. I wasn't too happy about it, but I'd come too far to back out now. I gathered my wits and walked over to the door. I proceeded to swing it open without fear, just as I had upstairs. Behind the door was a surprise. It was the attic. The attic upstairs. Everything was the same, only... There was a man standing at the window. Hearing me open the door, he turned around. His eyes widened when he saw me. He ran so fast in my direction that I didn't even have enough time to take a single step back. He rushed through the doorway and into the basement. He turned back around and slammed the attic door shut, making sure to lock the deadbolt. He turned to me grabbed my shoulders, and looked me dead in the eyes. I was baffled and scared for my life. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. 
After expressing his thanks, the man let go of me and ran upstairs, but not before turning back around and offering me some advice. Whatever you do, do not go in there. He gestured towards the attic door before bolting upstairs. I ran after him, wanting to ask some questions, but when I got upstairs, it was already too late. My front door was open, and I could see him running down the dirt road towards town. And that was that. I've slept every night since then with no noise or paranormal issues whatsoever. I even set up the cameras and voice recorder a few times to make sure. They didn't catch a damned thing. I don't know what the hell happened, but I am sure of one thing. The man that came out from behind the attic door was no ghost. It was a living, breathing person. Thank you for listening to this series. I'm still learning the ins and outs of audio editing. I found it surprisingly difficult to narrate someone else's writing because their phrasing is so different compared to mine. Plus, I've been dealing with asthma and allergies, so I've struggled, especially during part three. I decided to narrate this story because it was one of the first creepy pastas or creepy stories that I read on Reddit many years ago. It had always stuck with me. Let me know your thoughts on this story, as well as your personal theory on what the other attic was. At the end of my videos, I want to have a easter egg of some sort, maybe asking a question or giving you a random word to put into a phrase, and maybe um, pinning the most clever comment. Thank you again. You're my hero.